This episode of Live WP TV is sponsored by the Microsoft Nerd Center in Cambridge and HostGator.com. All right, guys, welcome to uh, this month's Boston WordPress Meetup. I'm Kurt, and I'm John. Okay. Anyways, uh, our, if you haven't logged in already, the Wi-Fi code is BW0729 on Cambridge. You can find us at BostonWP.org, at BostonWP on Twitter. Hashtag Boston WP. As always, tweet. We'll retweet you and make you famous. Oh, wait. Let me do something else for a second. Boston, are you there? It's behind the scenes. Don't look. Is he waiting? Try it again? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. Are we ready to go? Uh, we're just doing opening remarks right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm listening. Okay. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Jason Hickman. This is WP Water Cooler. Oh, oh. we got some, some issues here. All right. All right. So first off, I'd like to thank uh, Microsoft Nerd for letting us host our event here. Uh, we've been here since April 15, 2009, um, and it's an awesome venue with an awesome view and awesome things to play with. So uh, thanks to them. Uh, we have to thank we have to thank HostGator. They've been a, a sponsor for a number of years now. Um, you can use the code Boston WP Meetup for a twenty five percent discount. And of course, WP Engine. Uh, if you use the code WP Meetup Boston two thousand thirteen, uh, you guys will learn plenty more about them. So, Austin will give a talk. Uh, they're they've been our pizza sponsor for the past six months. Um, they've also been giving out the shirts the past couple of months as well. So, so yeah, we have a website, bostonwp.org. Uh, after every meetup, we post the minutes there and the videos. Uh, we also have job boards. They work, but they're getting spammed. So it might take me a day or two to go through and uh, approve the, so it gets on the uh, job boards. But I'm trying to get in there and sort through it all to approve them. If I miss it, just email me directly, jbishop at bostonwp.org, or any of the other organizers. We'll have that list up. Yeah, so we also have forums. Uh, do what you want with them, they're there. And uh, GitHub. Uh, we're, we're starting to host some things on GitHub, like the website, and some ideas for projects we think the community can be involved in, so check there. I'm pretty sure Catam uploaded uh, some cool bonus stuff on there. But we'll try and keep that going. If you guys have ideas, uh, reach out to us and let us know. Uh, here's a list of our organizers. Me, John, Tom, and Reiko in the back. Eric, who is somewhere again. Uh, Kadam, who is not here as well. Somewhere else. Yep, Jesse's somewhere else too. And then Kelly Mel. and Mel. Uh, we lost Kelly. Oh, Mel. Okay, so just Mel. We have Facebook, because everyone has Facebook. Uh, we have Twitter. We actually use Twitter. So, um, Talk to us on there. Like I said, if you tweet, we'll retweet you guys. Just use the hashtag BostonWP. Um, YouTube, search for BostonWP. We recently moved all our stuff off of Blip to YouTube. So go there and like all of our stuff so we get more exposure. We have and years of video on, videos online. Um, so like 50 some, no, it's more than like 100, 200, 200 videos. So if you already liked and shared the Blip videos, now you gotta go back and reshare the YouTube videos. <laughs> Uh, and then Google Plus, search for Boston VP. It's kind of like Facebook, we don't use it, but we have it because we're like everybody else. Yes. Um, we're here until September. We're here in the Nerd Center until September. Um, the dates are on the meetup.com site. They are slated as TBD, uh, but they're just placeholders for now until we get speakers. WordCamp Boston 2013. Uh, so the website is up. We are currently looking for speakers, sponsors, and as of an hour ago, uh, looking for ideas for the header image. Um, so if you guys have Boston themed, fall themed images we can use as the header graphic of the site, uh, preferably large on the larger sides, so around 2,000 pixels, so we can make it look nice on Retina. Submit them. Uh, give us your Twitter name or something like that, so that we can actually put your name on top of it, so when we go live with the new site, 
we can feature images from the community instead of images from around the web. Uh, yeah, check out the site. Um, we're going to be hosting it here this year, so it's a little bit smaller than usual, but we already have a, a, some pretty cool speakers lined up. So get your uh, talks in now and become a sponsor. We just launched that thing today. Yep. So check that out as well. Uh, other WordPress meetups, um, the New Hampshire meetup has been meeting on a regular basis now. Um, it, they're growing in numbers, so it's, it's one of the larger New Hampshire ones. Um, so check them out if you're near New Manchester. And there's also a Providence, Rhode Island meetup. Um, and they are actually hosting WordCamp Providence in about two to three weeks. So you can check out their site. Their site's live as well, 2013.providence.wordcamp.org. Um, it's at the URI Providence Feinstein campus. Uh, call for speakers and sponsors still open. So if you're looking to give a talk or if you're looking to sponsor, they're they're you know they're more than welcome and receptive to uh, ideas. I recommend going to both. Yes. Alternatively, if you're not going to WordCamp Providence, there's also Northeast PHP. Um, NortheastPHP.org. This is run by the Boston PHP Group. Um, it's the same weekend, it's Friday, August 16th to Sunday, August 18th. It's right here in the Nerd Center. Um, they're not just focusing on PHP this year, they're also focusing on web technologies and UX. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, I can forward it to the Boston PHP organizers um, and get you an answer. So uh, normally we ask questions and then ask if anybody's hiring. So. If you guys do have job opportunities, you can raise your hand and say what that opportunity is. I also recommend going to our website and uh, submitting to our job board. Just remember, email me so I can post it up there. But it does work. Uh, people do get jobs through there and do get hired, so use it. Um, but yeah, anybody? Yeah, we should have some time after this if uh, you guys do want to find each other and talk. Uh, my name is Josh Bialkoff. I have a, a WordPress development company called Forward Jump, and I'm looking for freelance developers. So if you're a strong WordPress developer, go to Forward Jump and uh, shoot me messages. Do you have one? Anybody else? All right. So tonight we have Austin from WP Engine. He's going to be giving a talk about the company, the history, uh, what they have to offer, and um, some other fun things as well. Austin, are you there? Yes, I am. Awesome. Okay. Let me warm my webcam real quick. Um, shut my window so that I don't get any street noise. So I don't, I don't know what it's like. I don't know what it's like in Boston, but I live in San Francisco, and it's super noisy in the middle of the city where I live. Um, so I don't know if some of you guys may have been out for work in San Francisco over the weekend. So you, you got some of that. Um, I'm fortunate to live right down the street from a fire station, which means that I get sirens all the time. Um, so. Thanks for having me out. I'm going to chat with you guys a little bit tonight about what it means to um, what it means to host your website um, and the various places that you can um, choose to put a WordPress site. 
uh, in terms of optimization with regard to speed and scalability, things like that. So the, um, of course, WP Engine is a managed WordPress host, so please assume that I'm super biased, that I have very strong opinions about this. Um, but I'm going to go through from start to finish to explain um, why um, various hosts have different advantages and disadvantages. And then at the end, I'll go through and let you guys actually ask questions. So if you've got some of those, um, I'll be happy to answer them. I'll cover everything from like, a, like this isn't all going to be super technical and super complicated because I know that at, at our local meetup, there's lots of people who come out to chat. Um, of various abilities and, and you know, technical skill sets and all that stuff. So um, let me log in with, or let me let me flip over to my presentation, and we'll go from there. Um, it's called WP Engine is awesome, but don't take my word for it. So a little bit of background. Um, According to the uh, according to the state of the word, we've got 18.9 percent of the internet built on WordPress now, and that means that even enterprise companies are taking advantage of WordPress to publish their content. Um, everybody's got a smartphone. Everybody's reading stuff on blogs and Twitter, and, and there has to be a, a place to actually publish that. Um, about a third of all the WordPress installations on the planet have been installed in the last year, and it's uh, part of that is because of just how user friendly WordPress is. As you all know, it's user friendly, but it's also dynamic. It gives you a lot, um, it gives you a lot uh, of flexibility, and you can dive as deep as you want to. So if you're an incredibly technical person, WordPress gives you a lot of opportunities. So WP Engine came along because we saw a need for folks like you, or um, all the way up to large organizations like even you know even Microsoft, we host uh, Yammer's blog. Um, to have premium hosting that lives up to um, high standards of, of technical uh, reliability and security and whatnot. So we power tens of thousands of WordPress sites, deliver some of the fastest, most reliable, most secure hosting possible. Um, that's all the pitch, I'll, I'll leave that as it is. Who uses WP Engine? We've got Bit9, we've got Google Ventures, Constant Contact, VMware, Foursquare, um, Kaspersky, we've even, you know, like I said, we've got Yammer, um, all the way down to small businesses, et cetera. Um, what sets WP Engine apart is the, the account management and WordPress experts. Um, but moving on from that, oh, we have the wrong presentation here, man. Give me a second. I don't be doing this. Um, you know what? I'm gonna give me a second to just punch here. Um, all right, all right. I don't, I don't want to sit here and dig for it. I thought I had the right presentation up, so I'm just gonna flip like this. So um, let's start at the beginning. There's a bunch of different types of hosting that you can use for your website. You can start with, with shared hosting. Um, there's uh, VPS stuff, which is um, gives you a lot more control over things. There's a dedicated box, and then there's managed hosting, which is what WP Engine, what's the kid, uh, Pagely, Web Synthesis, um, some of the, the, the new DreamHost offering. Um, those are all managed hosting uh, of various shapes and sizes. So shared hosting came along a few years ago when there were tons of people who were coming online to the internet, and they needed an easy hosting solution. Um, I think I was 16 when I put my first website on um, online, and I picked up what you know, I picked up basically the, the cheapest host, hosting option I could find because I sort of understood it uh, well enough to know that I needed to put a website on a server somewhere and then and then launch it that way. Um, but I didn't know how to install all of this, you know, the various layers of software on there in order to make that happen. And so a shared hosting solution is great for me. Um, I still actually have a Bluehost account where uh, I keep my dad's websites. He's got he's got a couple of businesses that he, that he puts on Bluehost, and he's happy with that. And it, and it makes more sense for me to leave them there than to have him migrate them. Um, so shared hosting is awesome uh, because you know it's it's cheap. And it works for you know it works until your website gets a lot of traffic or it gets hacked. Um, some of the downsides are because of because it's inexpensive. You've got um, a lot of you, you put they put a lot of websites onto a single server. 
It's a big BC, BV server, but it only has a certain number of bits that it can move in a given second in a given hour. Um, but they're going to put as many websites as possible onto a shared host in order to make it cost effective. Because at five bucks a month, there's only so there's only so much space they can give you on the server. They want to, you know, from a business standpoint, they have to maximize um, they have to maximize the money that they can make. Um, that also means that there that you're sharing server space with folks who don't necessarily um, host WordPress. They're hosting all sorts of websites. They're going to host a Drupal website, a, Dr a Joomla website. They might have installed Ruby on Rails. Um, you never really know until the, the website or sorry the server actually has a bunch of scripts and processes running on it that are necessary for a different web application that's not WordPress, um, but it's taking up server resources, which costs you server resources in, in, in speed. Shared hosting also doesn't necessarily um, logically separate the databases of, um, of one website from another. So what that means is I've got a few websites on a shared hosting server and then um, you know, let's say somebody else has, has a few websites. I keep my WordPress site up to date. I've got all of my, you know, I keep my plugins up to date. So I'm always running the latest version of WordPress, et cetera, doing everything that I need to for from a security standpoint. But my neighbor over here might not be taking as good care of that. Maybe they have this old site that they forgot about from a few years ago, and it's running WordPress 2.8. 2 um, they can get hacked on the shared server, and it can actually jump over, the hack can, the, can, can jump over databases because they're not separated well enough. Um, so it's a downside that way and, and when that happens it takes a long time to realize why you're getting hacked simply because you shouldn't be if you're taking care of everything. Um, but you have to worry about your neighbors and your shared hosting environment. So then moving up the, up the up the chain there's a VPS which stands for virtualized private server. And essentially what that means is you own a lot more server space and um, you get to control a lot more. It's a little more expensive, but um, in terms of scalability and speed, they virtualize an environment where you have a ton of space to, um, to grow and to serve a lot of traffic. On a shared host, um, you'll, run out of, you'll run out of bandwidth if you get too much traffic in an hour, and they'll, you might get throttled or shut down completely. Whereas on a VPS, you're paying for more capacity so if you suddenly get a traffic spike of 10x or 100x of what you're, what you're used to, the VPS can, is elastic and, and can offer you more bits during that time period, which is fantastic. You need that. The, the trade-off is that you have to know how to manage it yourself um, and be able to be your own sysadmin a lot of times, which is fantastic for a lot of people. I, I, I work with a lot of developers in the WordPress community who I respect a lot of people are way smarter than I'll ever be who say, I really like to be my own sysadmin and, and, and manage my websites. Um, and they're do-it-yourself types of types of folks who, uh, those are people I call up when I have a, you know, when I need to, to do some research for a blog post and things like that. Um, so a, a VPS will do that. It doesn't it doesn't give you as much security as, as you'd like. It's a little bit better off than a shared host um, because you're not you're you're not sharing so much space with so many other other websites. To really maximize both the speed and the security, you move up from a VPS to a dedicated server. At which point, um, you have a you have your own box that you're paying for. You're paying for your own server, which is significantly more expensive than a VPS because what a VPS is, it's essentially a series of daisy chain servers together that um, that all share capacity with each other. Whereas with a dedicated box, that's, that's what you've got. And you own all of the all of the data, as much capacity as that server has, you own it. You're paying for it, and you're not always using it. But it does mean that you're. Is that a question? No. Yeah. Okay. Um, but, but what that does mean is is um, you're totally separated from any other website, which gives you a, it gives you maximum security. Um, but again, you have to know how to manage that. If you get a traffic spike, then what happens is you don't even know how to spin up another dedicated box in order to meet the, the capacity that's, that's coming up. So um, that requires a significant technical know-how, um, and there's a lot of cost there that, uh, that people aren't necessarily interested in bearing. So that's where, so the next step up is where, is where managed WordPress hosting came from. So 
few years ago, WP Engine and PageLand said that all sort of came onto the scene because they recognized that there were millions and millions of people who were building WordPress sites and needed um, quality hosting that could take care of, of making WordPress fast, making it scalable, and making it secure. Um, now let's be honest, WordPress is actually fairly, uh, it, it requires some specific server management tools that, um, that other web platforms don't necessarily have. Um, WordPress was built to be very easy to, uh, to produce content on, and it wasn't built necessarily to be easy to, um, it, wasn't, it wasn't built to be easy to serve uh, or to work with the, with the server on. Um, but folks have figured out how to, how to make it scalable and how to make it secure. It's just a lot of technical know-how, and only about 5% of people who are actually building websites get to that level of expertise. And so that was where managed hosting came from, was there was, there was plenty of demand from people who needed really well-cared-for servers, um, and then stacked on top of well-cared-for, well-optimized servers for WordPress, then there's group, then like WP Engine has a, ma a massive support team for folks like you, you know, when you have a, when you need to troubleshoot something, um, maybe you've hired a developer to build your site, you've hired a designer, but they cost by the hour, and it doesn't make sense for you to necessarily keep them on retainer all the time, just because you have a simple question with your website. Um, managed hosts also provide really, really great WordPress support from experts, people who were may maybe running their own WordPress business, etc. Um, decided they wanted to join WP Engine and are now running support. Um, so we have, we have the largest uh, team of WordPress experts on support uh, out, of, out of any hosting company, period. Um, we're about 65 people now, um, and, and most of that is support. I joined the company, uh, fun fact, I joined the company about a year and a half ago, uh, and I was number 10. Now we're at 65. So there's like you know three of us in the marketing department and then 40 people on the support team. Um, so you get very fast responses when you when you check in with things like that. And a managed host has the, all of the benefits of a VPS. It's incredibly scalable. It's designed to weather huge traffic spikes. Um, like we've had folks who've gone to Oprah.com and had 15,000 hits a second and their page load time is stated about a second and a half, which is sort of the gold standard according to Google. Um, and the, uh, the managers also have very good passion, um, which means that even if it's just one visitor to the site, uh, the data can be served very, very quickly. Um, so it's fast and it's scalable. And the managed host also um, automatically update WordPress for you, so you don't have to worry about versioning and keeping your site up to date which it goes a long way to preventing you from ever getting hacked. Um, WP Engine actually guarantees your security so that you'll never, um, you know, if something were to happen from a security standpoint, um, we guarantee that, it, that our work and we'll clean it up for free. Um, security things can be really expensive and very, very painful um, when they happen because, you know, and it's simple like somebody hacked in with your password or, um, or you know, injected some malware into your site. It takes a long time to clean that stuff up. Um, and then managed hosts also have the benefit of a dedicated box that way from a security standpoint. Um, but the, the cost has been brought down so that it's actually fairly affordable for most people, particularly small businesses that need the expertise but don't have, um, you know, don't have the ability to hire a full-time IT person they, they need the support, they need the scale, they need to provide a really great customer experience when folks come to visit their website, whether it's a small e-commerce site or internet marketing or if it's just the face of your business. Um, you want to roll out the red carpet in the same way that you would if somebody came to your storefront or, or you know, called you to, to work with you online. So that's a lot of how all this stuff works. I can, um, I can definitely answer questions or, you know, chat with you guys more about this other presentation is was, was fun, but um, well, what didn't I cover that um, you guys all have questions about? I think somebody's talking, but you may have to repeat that. Right, I, I just gave him the mic, so. All right, so 
So, uh, oh, is it on? Austin, how are you doing? I just turned it on. Uh, but. The question that I have is uh, with regard to. Is it on? It's on, I think. Okay. Oh, okay. All right, so the question that I have is with regard to the hardware. Um, should we be concerned at all about uh, solid state drives versus uh, more traditional drives? Uh, I'm starting to see some hosting companies are beginning to make some mention of that, or uh, um, be concerned with the type of memory that uh, is built in um, when we evaluate. Have you ever have you um, have you ever seen the difference when you move over from? Uh, a MacBook that had a, a, a disk drive and then, and then goes over to a hard disk, hard disk drive? Yeah. It's substantial. Have you, ever seen, have you seen that difference? Yeah. It's incredible. Right. Um, I'm on a MacBook Pro right now that I that I bought that had the, the normal drive on it, and I pulled it out and put a uh, put a, a solid state in there. It's amazing how much faster things load. So, yeah, that is a consideration, um, but it's not a consideration for most websites. Um, solid state drives, we have them on most of our servers. It's something that we've invested in from the earliest days. But it's, um, it's not something that most websites need to worry about too much. It's kind of like one of those things where if, um, if you were asking about uh, should, you get the, should you get a V8 or should you get a V6, um, a V8 is going to be way faster. Um, but a V6 is going to take care of you just fine and be able to get you where you need to go on the highway and, and help you move quickly if you need to avoid an accident and things like that. Um, so they are faster, absolutely. Uh, but for you know, 85% of websites, it's not a huge consideration. There's another question coming up. I'm seeing everybody from like over, over there, I guess. And... Um, and like, yeah, no, it's great. But like, I feel like my, I, I must be this like big floating head in front of the classroom. Like, <laughs> 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 I have a really basic question. Um, but when you switch to a new host, how does that affect your ranking of your URL? Can you, in terms can of, you bring the mic closer to your mouth? Like oh, I'm sure, doing sure. I'm not speaking loudly. When you Perfect. move to a new host, yep. and it's an um, and it's a new, well, an existing URL. Actually, that was originally on Dreamhost that you mentioned. It's a client of mine. Do, would, would she lose some ranking in Google if I switched her URL to my host? Right now, I have her just forwarding to a new site with its own name. But we're, I'm afraid if I take her away from Dreamhost and park her, the subdomain that I refer to the new site that she'll okay, lose so her ranking. You're asking if by moving hosting companies you lose SEO. Exactly. Um, you, have to, you have to switch the DNS over from yeah. one hosting company to another. Does Google know as long as you have the same name? Like, will so, they know it's a new location? Google knows the difference um, and doesn't penalize you for moving things over. Um, there are some certain considerations that you need to, it's basically some boxes that you need to check when you move your migrated website over. Um, but they, Google understands that people are going to migrate to a different host every once in a while, and they know how to keep track of that. So basically all that you do is you tell Google all the SEO benefit that was at this particular IP address is now over here at this IP address. Uh, and Google goes, oh, okay. And then you just, um, there's an option in Google to um, recrawl the site. And you can do that, and then everything's fine. Like, for example, um, we just launched uh, Torque Magazine at WordCamp San Francisco. I don't know if you heard about it. So you go to torquemag.io. But that, if you go to torquemag.io slash category slash WP Daily, I think is what it's called, um, that's all of the WPDaily.co archives. And those have all been ported over, and the SEO benefit from the, the WP Daily had built up is now at torque.io. Um, so not only is the content there, but the SEO is pointed over there as well. Um, if that wasn't the case, then think about it. Let's, the 
we you know we moved like Yammer, like Microsoft's uh, company Yammer over to WP Engine. If they were gonna lose all of their SEO by migrating, they would never migrate. They'd be like, no, we have got you know, ten years of content right here with an SEO, we're gonna lose all that start start from scratch. Mm -hmm. See, so, yeah, we're gonna stay right here. Good. I didn't think it would make a difference, and I'm going to park it and direct redirect it to the new name that we're using also, but we want to keep that URL live since it has rankings, but... Um, yeah, you might, might just need to do some, you'll just need to do some 301 redirects if it's a new URL. Excuse me? Which there's a, there's a, if you're, if you're doing a, if you're doing a new URL, you just need to do some 301 redirects, um, which is a plugin that you can download into WordPress, just like set up your 301 redirects. There's 301 redirects, there's 302 redirects. 302 are temporary ones, 301 are permanent. And it's, if you're if you're bringing over to a new domain, then you need to do 301 redirect things. Great, I never would have known that. Thank you very much. You're welcome, said the huge foot. <laughs> <laughs> Again. Um, I, at one point, I think I looked at the, your hosting services and I was, um, I might have been frustrated by not being able to use Backup Buddy to be able to move a site from a development area over to yours, because uh, Backup Buddy, I happen to love, uh, it, it, it moves everything over, it, it handles all of the redirects, it, it, it fixes all the links, it's, it's very quick, easy, and reasonable. But if I'm not mistaken, when I talked to your tech support, they said no, uh, we're not, we don't uh, handle backup money. So, is there, is that still the case? And if so, uh, is there an easy way that you can move the site over, but change all of the uh, internal links without having to worry about? It? So we we don't we don't um, we don't disallow backup money. Um, we don't allow. The DB backup. I'm sorry, can you restate that? Because I think you had a double A. You don't do uh, so. Do you allow that? Yeah, we allow backup. Um, so, yeah, because you need to be able to, um, you need to be able to um, actually download a zip file and then move it over. And Backup Buddy is a great way to do it. Um, there's other there's other backup plugins that we don't allow, that we, that we don't allow. Um, but Backup Buddy is one of them. Cool. Thank you. Yes. Oh. You're welcome. Hi. <clears throat> My website is between the professional and business um, packages on your website. So how mm -hmm. do you charge if I normally get professional and get like Fireball? And I need to serve a lot more of you. If, if you get professional, and then what? You know, if uh, the page views go beyond the hundred thousand visits, I'm assuming that's paid for you. Sure. Um, that's actually a really good question. So in the past, we've been really lax about enforcing that. Um, we've actually had a lot of customers who have proactively moved to a different host. Because they knew that they weren't going to, they didn't want to upgrade all the way to the business plan, but they were getting, you know, like 10,000, 20,000, 40,000 more page views than was allowed on the professional plan. Um, so, what we're doing is, and this is, you know, this hasn't been officially announced yet, but I've written all the communication for it and stuff that's happening, is we're, we're um, creating overage pricing protection. So, that if you go over, you pay a buck for every thousand visitors over your limit. Um, so at the pro plan, you know, you you'll you might pay a few dollars more, but it, it gives you the elasticity so that you don't have to make such a huge jump from like 99 bucks a month to 250 bucks a month. Um, now if you're on a, on the personal plan and suddenly you're like you've got 10,000 more pages in one month and you go from a $29 bill to a $39, $40 bill, like that's gonna be a little bit bigger of a jump. Um, but it's the same sort of overages that AT&T does, right? Where if I need another gig on my phone, then um, I pay 15 bucks or something, which is absurd. Um, I'm sure it's a huge profit deal for them. Um, we just pay a buck, you know, it's, it'll be a dollar for a thousand visitors. 
Who's next? Oh, can you hear me? Yep. Hey, thank you so much uh, for your presentation. Um, You're welcome. Uh, my question is, could you just go through some of the kinds of speed issues that changing your hosting sort of couldn't address? Um, well, it depends on how you're changing your hosting service. So if you're changing your hosting service from Bluehost to Dreamhost, um, it, will address, it will address none of the speed issues um, because they haven't, nothing really of substance changes. So when you move over from a shared hosting platform to uh, like a managed hosting platform like WP Engine, everything, everything changes. Um, because we've customized everything from the stack all the way down, um, and then, and that's a, that would be not as much would be sped up if you move from like WP Engine to PageFit, for example, because they do caching differently than WP Engine does. Um, and I want to and I want to like go on record as as like, I don't really want to make a value judgment with that. Um, I just want to explain the differences. Uh, WP or, or sorry, Pagely has W3 Total Cache that they that they use with all their customers and it's configured for you. Um, and they have a really optimal configuration. Um, they've, built, they've built some good technology using W3 Total Cache. Um, but there's a limitation of caching everything at the plugin level. Um, and that's part of the reason that WP Engine doesn't allow caching plugins. Um, we've built our own caching infrastructure and have everything set up on a CDN. And the caching actually goes all the way through the server level down to the base. Um, our server ar architecture is designed to cache WordPress, um, and a plugin simply can't get at everything that you can get to when you, you know, like take the lid off the server and start uh, moving ones and zeros around with Apache um, or Nginx. So those are some of the things that get taken care of. Um, what else? Um, what you really want to worry about are um, how you're dealing with images and how you're dealing with big files like CSS. Those are two things that um, we leave up to the user to manage. Um, we used to do this thing called Yahoo's uh, Smush It. Um, you can Google that, and it's a it's a program that basically goes through and compresses large image files and compresses large CSS files so that you speed up how things load. Um, so that's something that we leave to the user because we, we, we ran it for a while but then we realized that um, there are some people who really knew what they were doing and they were designing how, or they were architecting how individual pages would load in order or like lazy loading thing, like lazy loading JavaScript and stuff like that. Um, that if we were too paternalistic about things like that, uh, it actually was, it did our, our users a disservice. Let's see what else. Um, you, wanna, you wanna make sure that you're loading certain things after one another, like you want JavaScript to load later, uh, like, like Google, Google Analytics, for example. You don't wanna load that immediately when you hit a page because that'll hold everything else up for a second or two. Um, you want to load that after uh, after you've gotten the images and the content on, so that the user can actually interact with the page, um, and that's a development issue, not a hosting issue. Um, things like that. Is that is that is that answer your question, or do you have something more specific that we can drill down into? I think, I think that's good advice. Yeah. I mean, I just built a, a site that's really heavy on both the back end. And we're actually thinking about switching to uh, to WP Engine. I'm just curious, sort of, what promises we can make our our client base. So, websites speed up two to four x um, from any host when when you migrate over to WP Engine. That's not just shared hosting; um, it's managed hosting as well. Um, so, in terms of that, like we, we speed things up quite a bit. I've got a there's a developer that I work with. Um, his name is Jackie Levy, and um, he is, his company is called Arrow Root Media. And he's got a couple of blog posts where he talks about WP Engine speeding up sites 7x uh, or more. Um, 
So the caveat that I would offer you is that it really depends on how the website is currently coded and set up. Um, because of the way our caching is so aggressive, if um, you guys, if, if the website uses session variables uh, a lot and, and other things like that, um, it may require some redevelopment to make sure that uh, it's compatible with our caching architecture. Um, so I'd recommend that um, you do some testing on that, just so that you know that you know how things are going to look on your client side before you move it over. Um, but that's really the only gotcha. So what? Oh, he says thank you. Yeah, well, yeah. Hello, hi. And hi. So I just wanted to ask, and at least a very impressive system, and I have a lot of clients these days um, asking that their IP address be geographically located where their business is located. Oh. Oh. And can you still hear me? Yeah. Screen. Yeah. It's just the screensaver. <laughs> um, so yeah, I have clients asking that the IP address of their website is located in the same city as their business, which is to do a thing with SEO. And do you have servers and or IP addresses in Boston and London? Um, that's not going to matter as much for your, uh, for your SEO. Um, I don't know of anybody that could offer the ability to put an IP address in whatever city that you're in. Mm -hmm. um, we do have Eastern Seaboard servers. Um, we've got servers in Dallas, uh, we've got servers in the UK, we've got servers in Japan. Yeah. Um, there's other ways that you can tweak the IP or tweak your content, um, like from an SEO standpoint, to uh, maximize the local, uh, the local search traffic. However, um, you know, like people, there used to be a lot of thought that if it, you had a dedicated IP address, that it would be better for your SEO. Um, that's not true. Uh, I think I think people get a little bit uh, a little bit carried away with the importance of an IP address um, with regard to SEO. Uh, that's stuff that Matt Cutts has addressed on his blog, um, and not in the last year, but like in the last six years, he sort of said, "Yeah, that's not really valid." Um, a long time ago, what people would do is they would have they would create those like you know, farm sites where they would just create a bunch of backlinks for SEO purposes, uh, and that worked really really well. It would build things up, um, and then in order to um, in order for that to not get picked up as, by Google as spam, um, they would have to put it all on separate IP address blocks. Otherwise, if it's all those backlinks are coming from the same IP address block, they know that it's like the same. That they, they knew it was black hat SEO that was going on. Um, so Google has gotten sophisticated about preventing black hat SEO. Um, you know, and that's sort of like why the, the question about the dedicated IP address came up. Um, but really, if, if that's what you're looking for, um, it's not so much about having um, it's not so much about having the IP address as it is having good content that's locally relevant to your users. That's great, right. thank you. Hey Austin. Uh, hey. My, uh, my name's Josh, I'm a customer. I just wanted to thank you. Um, it's been really a pleasure working with WP Engine and um, you guys have a really awesome. good product and uh, just want, I'm glad that you're uh, you know, contributing to the WordPress community and it's great to have you here, thanks. Thanks Josh, appreciate it. One more question. Um, you seen that your service will scale up to pretty much any page you when you gave a figure of 15,000 views per second for one of your examples. Are, is there a upper limit? Is there a what? Upper limit, like say beyond a certain amount that you can't handle? Or... I mean, if I were going to tell you that I could give you unlimited page views on your server, then I would sound just like GoDaddy. Um, 
if I if I told you that it was infinitely scalable, um, then I would sound just like GoDaddy. Um, so that's of course there's limitation. I'm not it. One of the ways that we sort of um, so there's another there's there's an even more extreme example of somebody that we host. There's a music festival in Tennessee called Bonnaroo. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's like this massive like five or seven day music festival that where you like you know all these people all these young people come out and just like literally like watch these bands play for seven days and you know, get muddy and, and whatever else happens at a seven day music festival. Um, Bonnaroo moved over to WordPress in 2012 because years passed, they would release their lineup. Um, they would have such an inundation of traffic to buy tickets because the tickets sell out quickly. Um, so they would get so much traffic that the site would just fall over every single time. So they moved it over to WP Engine. Um, and what we, you know, they said, they basically specked out how much traffic they thought that they were going to get. Um, you know, they had a warning. They basically said, hey, um, we're going to probably do about X number of visitors today. So is there something that you guys can do to make sure that that doesn't happen? So the answer to that is yes. Um, we set them up with some very specific hardware. And when they released their lineup, they did 100 million HTTP requests in about 12 hours. Um, it was 8 million unique visitors in, in that period of time. Um, so, I mean, that's an incredible amount of traffic. And had they not, um, you know, had they not let us know, I, I, don't, I don't know how well we would have been able to stand up under the traffic. Um, probably fairly well, but there's no telling because we knew how to anticipate it. Um, there was another example where somebody got on 2020 and they didn't actually know what was going to happen and so we didn't either because they couldn't let us know. Everything stayed up just fine. Um, so we've designed the architecture and have hot servers running so that that overflow can happen. Um, and really the only thing, the only time I ever hear about sites going down because of traffic is because somebody's running a plugin that they shouldn't be running and it takes up too much process power and at scale, like those little like those little things, those little like last one percent things at scale, those just spiral out of control and bring a server down. And that's the only stuff that I hear about people, you know, their servers falling over at WP engines when there was a plugin that they didn't realize was not scalable, um, and that's what caused the issues. So let me take let me take one more question and then I gotta then I gotta bail. Anybody else? Wow. Everyone wants to go last. All right, I think that's it. Oh. All right, perfect timing there. Yeah. Okay, here we go. This guy right here. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Austin. Hey, thanks guys. Thanks for having me out. Feel the love all the way from the